Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's program. As people start to trickle in, we're going to play the Urban Land Institute spring, meeting, spring meeting video, and I will see you back shortly. That video, of course, is exactly what our special lunch webinar today is all about, the Urban Land Institute spring meeting that for the first time will be here in our city, Toronto. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michelle Ackerman. I'm a consultant with the Kilmerick Group and chair of ULI Toronto. I'm excited to kick off this session designed to explain what the ULI spring meeting is all about and why this unique event in our city is a must attend for every professional in the land and development space private, public, and not-for-profit sectors. Before we get into this, as always, we will begin our session with a land acknowledgement. As a Toronto region-based organization, we acknowledge the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. We also acknowledge that Toronto was covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. We are all treaty people, people. Many of us have come here as settlers, immigrants, and newcomers in this generation or generations past. ULI Toronto stands in solidarity with Indigenous communities demanding action and accountability for the ongoing legacy of the residential school system. We'd also like to acknowledge and honor those who came here involuntarily, particularly descendants from those were brought here through enslavement. To better understand the meaning behind this land acknowledgement, we recommend four programs that we have uploaded to YouTube. The links you will find available uh, in the chat. Thank you, Thamina. We are so pleased to be hosting this explainer webinar to help ULI members from Toronto and across Canada understand what is the spring meeting and why they should not miss this unique opportunity to attend one in Toronto. And we are doing this less than two weeks ahead of the spring meeting early bird deadline of March 8th. It is now my distinct pleasure as chair of ULI Toronto to introduce a past chair and longtime champion of all things ULI, Rob Spanier, president Spanier Group, who will serve as today's webinar MC as we animate the key features of the spring meeting. Over to you, Rob. Thanks, Michelle, and welcome everyone. So happy to uh, have you here virtually with all of us. Really pleased to be emceeing this session today, and it's going to be a really interesting one. We have some incredible 
speakers, longtime ULI supporters, uh, longtime uh, members of the board, and really in incredible activists for this incredible organization in Toronto. Um, we're really excited about this opportunity for the ULI Spring Meeting. It's something we've been thinking about for a very long time. Uh, we started thinking about this almost 10 years ago. We came very close in 2020. Unfortunately, the pandemic got in the way, and we are so pleased to finally welcome the ULI Spring Meeting, Global Spring Meeting, to Toronto. To help animate just a few of the elements of this conference, I'm joined by a lineup of incredible people, as I mentioned to you, and each one's going to give you a little bit of their uh, flavor of what you have to expect for this incredible conference and their role within it. Um, there's no better person to start with than Peter Ballin, Global Head of Real Estate for CVP Investments, who is the Urban Land Institute's Global Chair. So I'm going to welcome Peter uh, to the mic to give us a couple of his thoughts about the upcoming conference. Peter. Uh, thank, thanks, Rob. And uh, for those of you who don't know Rob, he's, he's the uh, beating heart of ULI. He's really responsible for ULI Toronto becoming really uh, ULI's most vibrant uh, district council. So thanks, Robin. Um, I, you know, and on that theme, um, I think this is an incredible opportunity for Toronto to show the rest of the world uh, what ULI uh, can benefit from Toronto. Toronto is really one of the most vibrant communities and we've done some tremendous things related to ULI's highest priorities. And this is a great time to um, showcase both the city and what we're doing, but I'd also encourage each of you to use this as an opportunity uh, to see what ULI can offer to you. Um, if you're just involved at the district council, that's just fabulous. That is enough to satisfy uh, uh, almost every need. But I do want to mention that it's a 45,000 person plus organization in hundreds of countries, not hundreds, dozens of countries. I was just in India last week and we opened up ULI India to much enthusiasm and there's a lot to be learned from our peers in other countries on some of the key factors like housing attainability diversity equity inclusion and of course net zero climate change so i do encourage you to come out there'll be a great opportunity to uh, both share and learn with a lot of clo uh, global colleagues thanks peter i'm now going to welcome ash lawrence senior vice president and head of alternatives at agf investments and one of the co-chairs of this uh, ULI Toronto spring meeting. And Ash, would love you to give a little bit of your perspective from the chairs of the conference as to why this is such a great opportunity to attend. And I think you might be on mute, just a heads up. Thanks, Rob. Uh, and thanks, Peter, as well, for your comments. Um, I, I think I'll actually just segue qu quickly off Peter here for a second and say I think it is great that we have one, our district becoming one of the largest in North America. We have a Canadian global chair at ULI, and now we have a conference in Toronto. So I think that's not only great for Toronto, I think it's great for ULI and Canadian content in general. And having the conference here is a great way to kickstart that, I think, for ULI. Uh, as Rob mentioned, I'm, I'm Ash Lawrence. Uh, I am a co-chair with three other folks for the spring meeting. Um, Ken Tannenbaum from Kilmer Group, uh, Ali Wolf from Oxford, and Cindy Rottenberg Water, uh, Walker from Urban Strategies. Uh, so I am representing them here. Uh, but the reality is uh, most of the really hard work is done uh, by the committee of volunteers uh, that we have that are organizing a lot of the content uh, with three days of speakers, tours, discussions, and networking. Uh, there is a lot of regional content uh, that is going to be uh, a part of the conference that the volunteers are organizing. And then of course the broader conference that there is a lot of work being done at ULI head office uh, in DC to make sure that we cover a, a wide range of North American and global topics as well as regional focused Toronto topics. Uh, I think you're going to hear from some of them uh, as Rob takes you through the agenda today, so I'll let them speak to that. Uh, but very quickly, just in terms of, quite frankly, what spring meeting is, uh, it brings together uh, an incredible cross-section of the real estate community globally. There's about 4,000 attendees that usually attend these events, 90% of which, and I think this is really important for some of the networking, 90% of those attendees are, are what we would term as, as senior level executives. 
So decision makers, people really in the know, in some cases, people at the cutting edge of things like design and development expertise. And they come from, or again, all, all around the world, especially from south of the border. So I think it's a, it's a great way for networking. It's a great way to get exposure to best practices. It's a great way to get exposure to maybe your next capital source, maybe your next architect. Uh, it, it really is a great cross section from around the industry. Thanks, Ash. That was fantastic. And I had a bunch of questions ready for each speaker, but they seem to have answered the question as we go through it. So I'm going to continue down the line because I really want to get a chance to hear from everyone. Um, next up is Salim Raji, President and CEO of York University Development Corporation. And Salim is going to talk to us about some of the local panels that we have at the conference. What's nice about these conferences and specifically the spring conferences, there's some incredible tours you're going to hear about in a few moments. There are great panels, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit later on about the networking. And really, the foundation of ULI is all about these relationships. And for anyone who has not had the chance to be at one of these conferences, it's such a great opportunity because it's in Canada. It's close to home, and you're going to really get to learn from and meet with some of your peers and perhaps some people from further afar and abroad. I'll pass it over to Salima so she can take us through some of the local panels. Thank you so much, Rob, and, and thanks, Ash. Um, I had the great pleasure of co-leading the development of the six local panels that will take place across the conference dates. There's so many great Toronto stories to tell, so it was really hard to narrow it down to six. But our approach was to look at the city building stories that our urban region can offer out of town industry guests and opportunities that they may be able to export to their own communities um, and, and really thinking about both our successes, but also our learnings as a city. Um, and so this includes those that you see on the screen, but um, our, the housing and development approach to North America's largest immigration wave, and that one's titled Arrival City, Building North America's Most Diverse City. Um, our approach to mixed income neighborhoods, of course, that's our housing affordability, success in the mix. Um, Toronto climate and resiliency, and we have our former mayor, uh, David Miller, uh, moderating that, and that's titled Accelerating Net Zero at District Stale, Climate Action and Resiliency in Toronto. Um, building urbanisms into the suburbs, as we've seen across our region, and so we're calling this one Edge City Urbanism, Suburban Urbanism. Uh, Reimagining local and regional malls is perhaps the final frontier of truly urban development, this wave that we're currently seeing in the in the city. And so we're calling that one Reimagining the Mall, Final Frontier. Um, and last, with no easy sites left in the core or the downtown, how do we manage the complexity of challenging sites? And so developing in Toronto, confront, uh, confronting complexity. These are our local program, um, but there's actually more than 20 other sessions that have been designed by others in the ULI global network that will also be on offer for all the attendees at the Toronto uh, spring meeting. And those cover topics from health oriented communities to economic forecasts of the future and so much more. Um, but with that, I'm excited to pass it back to Rob so that we can hear uh, we, he can bring on our next speaker and we can hear about tours. That's great. And just one thing that you said, Salima, before we go there on, on the, the panels, what I think is so interesting is at Toronto, we've always had a history and a legacy of really trying to dig into the details. And what's really exciting about those panels, I think, is an opportunity to learn from some of the local experts. Um, and I think that what you guys have done is such a great uh, you've done such a great job putting together the content that doesn't just span Toronto, but Toronto is such a large region and is really trying to investigate our uh, challenges and opportunities that are further and afar. Um, if you had to pick one of your favorite panels that you, uh, <laughs> I was going to ask you the tough question, what's one of the, one of your favorites that you've put together for this? Yeah. Well, I should pick the one that you're moderating, right? <laughs> um, I, I actually as we've been going through it, the thought that's been in my mind is, oh my God, there's so much content that I want to go to at this meeting. And of course, things happen at the same time. And so one of the things that's been a struggle for me is just choosing between everything that's going on. But I think, um, honestly, every single one of these is, is near and dear to my heart. I think the one about, you know, just our, our waves of immigration is such a Toronto story and has so much to offer. Even if you're from here, there's probably so much to, to take away from that. 
um, you know, uh, thinking about how our regional malls are redeveloping. It's such a current story for us and one that we're seeing across North America. And of course, one that you're leading, Rob, you know, I think that's incredible. But every single one of these has so much depth and so much positivity about what Toronto has done, but also, you know, layering in what mistakes have we made? What will we do different in the future? How could we learn from other places as well? And what can other places learn from us? It's great. Thank you so much. And now we have Antonio Gomez Palacio, partner uh, and an urban planner from Dialogue. And I know how hard Antonio has been working on these tours. And, and I should have mentioned this earlier that as well as the panels, uh, as well as the networking, there are some incredible tours. And I know that Toronto historically has put a lot of effort into these tours to try to really measure up to what is done at the ULI conferences worldwide. And I'm going to let Antonio chime in on some of the incredible tours that have been put together. And then uh, we can chat a bit about that. Over to you. Sure. Well, th thanks a lot, Rob. Um, I get to speak about all the amazing tours that we have developed for the conference. And, you know, there's over 30 tours. Yeah, frankly, I, I think I got to be part of the, the, the most fun part of the symposium. Sorry, everybody else. But these are coming together in an amazing way. So spread across three days. Each morning, attendees are going to have an opportunity to participate in half-day tours without missing any of the, the main conference programming. And yes, the tours provide a really interesting cross-section of all the local issues and innovations. They cover everything from our intense waterfront revitalization, model suburbs, TOD stories, flaws and all, our experience with smart city technologies, the post-pandemic workplace, our deep ravine ecosystems, and so much more. There's really so much going on in Toronto. I think visitors will identify with many of the issues we are facing, uh, affordability, equity and inclusion, social well-being, managing growth, sensitive infill. There's so, many, so much to find in, in, in these that I think they'll, they'll also find some, um, a lot of lessons learned from the approaches that we have taken many things to be inspired by and many things that maybe they were going to wish to avoid. But I should say that I'm most excited, not only by the places that we're going and the topics that we're addressing, by, but by the caliber of the speakers we have assembled for, for these tours. You know, just picture this, you're going to have uh, folks standing at a street corner and hearing firsthand from the planners, the developers, the community members who know every detail intimately about each one of these sites and locations and projects. So obviously we have designed the tours with the out of town folks in mind, um, but we've also uh, know that they're gonna be incredibly relevant for locals um, because each one of these sites is continuously evolving and changing and, and dynamic. Plus we're gonna be talking about the backstories behind each one of these locations. And our speakers are going to be able to tease out the, um, the really interesting aspects out of the bricks and mortars that we get to see. Um, hey, I know Toronto intimately. And frankly, I wish I could attend every one of the, the, these tours because they're with all those speakers and locations, they look pretty, pretty cool. But anyway, I'll, I'll turn it back, back to you, Rob, um, because I know that you know, picking up on, on your previous point, you've participated on, on a lot of the, the tours. And I'm just wondering if you can speak about some of the, you know, the parallel values that you see coming out of attending some of some of these tours. You know, you're going to be on, on the bus with a number of different people. And, and I know that you've gained a tremendous amount of experience from them. Yeah, I actually bought my house in Toronto based on a local ULI tour that I went on so many years ago. And it was of a neighborhood that I didn't quite know. And it was had to do with the development in the area, community development. And I was so blown away by the whole area. It completely changed my mind. And one of the things that I'd encourage everyone on the call when you do sign up for the conference would be to make sure that you sign up for a tour if you're coming. It's worth the effort, it's worth the investment, it's worth the time. I think they're so dynamic. And I think what's so interesting is, even though you may be from Toronto or from the Toronto region, as you said, Antonio, you see things from a different perspective through a different lens. And it actually opens your mind to some of the issues and the challenges or opportunities for your own projects and your own cities or your own neighborhoods that you may not have otherwise seen. And I think it's such a great, great thing. 
The other thing that's really nice is it's a small group of individuals that spend a compact amount of time together for, you know, four or six hours together. And so you actually get to intimately get to know these people. I remember meeting someone from Tokyo when I was on a tour in Dallas. And I remember uh, connecting with some people in the United States um, from New York who were actually on the tour who were members of the ULI New York uh, District Council. And you just get such an incredible perspective. And I think it's the people on the bus that actually uh, you get to know. And it really has a lot to do with not just networking, but learning from one another. And that's what I think is so special about ULI and these conferences is that you're going to meet people that you otherwise would have never met. I remember meeting the head of the Presidio Trust in San Francisco in Toronto at a conference so many years ago and ended up uh, working with them in San Francisco several years later. So I think it's just an opportunity to connect. And certainly if you're coming, sign up early. These tours have a habit of getting uh, you know, oversubscribed quickly. So if there's something that you wanna uh, take a look at, I, I encourage you definitely to sign up. Um, we're gonna move on to uh, Emma West, who's the incoming WLI Global Chair, the past chair of ULI Toronto, and truly uh, a champion of all things ULI as well. Um, had the privilege of working with Emma for many, many years in ULI. And Emma's gonna talk to us a little bit about the, uh, the Women's Leadership in, um, Initiative, uh, both locally and globally, and, and what that means to ULI and what it will mean to the conference. Thanks, Rob. Um Great to hear all of the amazing things that are going to happen. I hope everyone in the audience is getting excited. You've heard a lot about the content. You've heard a bit about the network as well. And so that's what I want to focus in on with you right now. One of the great things about the spring meeting and the fall meeting, but the spring meeting that is going to be here, um, there's a lot of special programming and networking oriented to many demographic groups within the broader ULI network. And so like the uh, programs and tours that you've heard about, you're gonna have to make choices about where to go, but there will be networking events related to DEI, um, the Young Leaders Group, which is our um, un under 35 group, ULI Next, which is mid-career professionals up to about 45 years of age. Um, and of course, the Women's Leadership Initiative. and because I have the pleasure of um, being the incoming chair, I know a lot about the programming that we're putting together for the spring meeting. And I think it's going to be incredible. Um, we are having a reception, curated conversation. So again, about smaller groups getting together, speaking to specific topics. There's going to be a fireside chat with a local a uh, female industry leader talking about her career and the work that she does. Um, also combined sessions with ULI's DEI committee on best practices in terms of what different WLI and DEI committees are doing across the whole ULI network, because that's one of the strengths we learn from each other. We get inspired by each other when we go to these meetings. Um, and so, you know, even if it is in our local community, we're going to be having people coming here that we can connect with, as Rob was saying, um, and learn from and be inspired by. So that's my quick overview. That's great. Uh, and just one question before I let you go. I, I know that both you and Ash Lawrence, who we heard from a few minutes ago, our two representatives on the ULI America's Executive Committee. Um, you know, ULI members from Toronto and across Canada are generally not as represented in the international uh, scene of ULI. And a lot of people know perhaps ULI BC, ULI Toronto, but they don't know what this larger organization is all about. Can you uh, talk a bit about how being, you know, attending the conference and connecting might actually give people a window into more involvement globally? Uh, and how the spring meeting can hopefully, you know, be a bit of a springboard to that. That's a great question, Rob, because a lot of us are tied to our local district councils and are not involved at the international level, don't even have a sense of what's happening at the international level. But going to either some of these networking events or as Rob was describing, going to the tours and connecting with people there are lots of ways that we can all get involved in the organization more broadly. There are things called product councils, which are also smaller groups. And so 
these conferences are about, you know, being in a big forum with thousands of people, but also getting into smaller groups, smaller subcommittees. The Women's Leadership Initiative has a committee with subcommittees at the Americas level. Um, and there are ways that when you bump into people at the conference, you connect and you find ways to get involved and that can broaden your career prospects as you were describing, Rob, but also personally and professionally, you can find people that you connect with that can help, you know, mentor you or um, you can mentor them and all of that's quite rewarding. That's great. And it's such an important point on relationships because I think that, you know, I've had the benefit of knowing so many people who have been involved in ULI and knew them before and after. And I think it's really just about the connections, the people that you meet and whatever that opportunity may mean. You may just have a question to reach out. And one of the things I'll urge all the people listening in today is everyone on, on this uh, session is always welcome to sort of open to questions. And that's the one thing that's so nice about ULI is being able to connect with your peers and with your colleagues to be able to learn from them, get to know them, and hopefully enrich your lives. It's not just about in enriching your, your business lives, it's your, your, your total experience, which I think is really special. I'm gonna pass the mic over to our next speaker. Um, is Gary Berman, he's the president and CEO of Tricon Residential. And, and Gary has been so uh, supportive of ULI locally and globally, uh, is one of the lead sponsors of the conference, is an incredible ambassador and so knowledgeable on, on all things ULI. And he's gonna take an opportunity to talk a bit about, you know, what we've done to try to help uh, make this conference great and talk a bit about, uh, what we are doing from a sponsorship perspective. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Gary. Scrabble, well, you know, as, as you know, I mean, to plan an event like this, it, it takes a village. Uh, it also takes a, a huge amount of capital uh, to, to make it successful. And when we went to Washington and said, you know, we want to have the spring meeting in, in Toronto, they said, okay, but in order to do that, you need to commit to raising $2 million. And so I'm thrilled to say that we have now raised $2 million and we did it ahead of schedule. And, and as you know, Rob, you may, you know, you talked about it earlier, but we, we did this before in, in, you know, we tried to do it in spring of 2020 and then that conference got canceled. We also raised the $2 million back then. So if you think about it, we actually raised $4 million, which is I think pretty, pretty amazing. So I, I think I wanted to thank all the sponsors. Many of them are Toronto based. Thank you for making this happen. Uh, this is a wonderful opportunity for everybody in Toronto to showcase, you know, what we're doing here. And Rob, I wanted to, I wanted to thank you, um, you know, as past chair, Michelle, congratulate you. I know how persistent you, uh, this leadership and, and, and former leadership uh, have been in trying to bring ULI to Toronto. And um, it, it's, it's, this is, again, as I said, it's a great opportunity. I, I, you know, it reminds me a little bit of a story that, you know, um, George W. Bush, uh, you know, and I, I, by, I just preface this, I know we're in a politically sensitive world, so I'm not an advocate for George W. Bush or, or Putin, but George W. Bush likes to tell the story about him and Putin. And when Putin came to the White House, um, he brought out his dog and Putin looked somewhat amused. And then when Bush went to Moscow, Putin brought out his Doberman Pinscher and he said, now this is a dog. And that's kind of how I feel about this, because when we've gone to these spring meetings in Charlotte and San Diego and Nashville, they're great cities. We do a lot of business there. There's interesting things happening. But when people, when Americans now come to Toronto, they're going to say, this is a city. This is a city. We are at the forefront of city building and placemaking. And all the people uh, that you see on the screen here, the sponsors, have a hand in making this one of the world's best cities. So I couldn't be more excited. And I wanted to thank and congratulate you. Thank you so much. And I'm going to actually just uh, on the back of, of your comments, thank you. And I, you've been such a champion. I remember when several years before the 2020 uh, uh, spring meeting, uh, I was a little disappointed because we thought we were going to have it a little earlier. And you just, I remember you said to me, it's, you know, it's a long game. Let's play the long game because we really have an incredible things to showcase in Toronto. We have incredible stories to share. We have incredible developments and, and stories of, uh, progress and and challenges and adversity, but also capital. And one of the things that I think is so interesting about the conference is really 
uh, some of the great capital uh, players come to the conference to understand the developments that are happening here and having Tricon be able to be such an integral part of this conference to showcase all the work that you're doing. It's hard sometimes when you're traveling around, they don't always get to see all the great things that are happening, like the likes of Tricon, like the likes of Oxford, Brookfield, and so many other incredible companies that uh, call Canada and, and Toronto their home. It's such a great opportunity to share the knowledge of what we're doing here and how that's transferable over to the United States and, and Europe and, and other parts. But one thing I just wanted to ask you before I, I move on is, you know, as CEO of Tricon, you've always encouraged your team to get involved and embrace ULI both locally and globally. And you sort of touched on it, but maybe you can just give people that, that sense because I believe that it's such an important message to share. You, you know, some of the people on this call may not be able to attend, but some of their staff may be able to attend. And so why has it always been important for you to you know, get, get your team involved? I think it's a great question. And I think it, it wouldn't be a stretch to say that ULI has been a key factor in Tricon's success. You know, now we have over a thousand employees, but when I joined the company 20 years ago, we had less than 20 employees and we got together as an executive team. There are only four or five of us. And we said, how do we grow? How do we make this happen? And one thing we arrived on was to join ULI. And so all of us joined ULI. We divided and conquered. I joined R RNDC Gold. Others joined other, you know, product councils. But through those meetings, we you talked about it. We made contacts. We formed relationships. We met partners. We met lenders. We met consultants, architects. And we were able, through those relationships, to build a business. And obviously, over time, to stay in touch and learn and to keep on growing. And so it's been, ULI has been an incredible part, I think, of Tricon's success. And now that, you know, we've evolved in a sense, in a way, graduated, I think, to the next level. Now ULI is actually a great form for us to meet people and hire people. We've actually hired a number of our key development personnel through ULI local meetings in different cities. So uh, it's a great form. I can't speak more highly about the organization. And obviously, again, we've done a great job. You guys have done such a great job in, 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 in creating this incredible district council in Toronto. And I think now, I think when everyone comes and sees, again, like I said, this is a city. When they see what's happening in Toronto, largely an American audience, they are going to be blown away. And Rob, now I think this is the opportunity to then parlay that into then doing a fall meeting, right? So let's do a great job on the spring meeting, but then ultimately let's move over to a fall meeting and then let's be a regular part of that fall meeting, uh, you know, series. Fantastic. And it sounds like the entire management committee in Toronto has their work cut out for them as, as we forge new paths. But thank you. I'm just going to take one minute now to talk a bit about um, the aspects that you don't see. There's the programming. There are the events. There are the tours. Uh, there are obviously the product councils, which is a big part of, of ULI as well. And we didn't talk too much about that today, um, but those are, are groups that focus in on various disciplines uh, where you get together with your peers twice a year. And I do encourage everyone who attends the conference to learn more about that because I think it's it's a really valuable opportunity to connect. But one of the other things that, that I always found uh, refreshing is new perspectives you know, you come to a new city, um, and it may be a city that you've, you've visited with your family, with your friends, but you're now looking at it with a different lens. And there are so many opportunities to get out and, and take a walk, get out and see what's happening and get out and connect with people. So much of the conference, and I know how much effort and energy is put in by certainly the local, uh, the team that's done so much great work here, as well as ULI National, uh, happens within the rooms, within the events, but there's also this dynamic of people that are all uh, here for the same reason, for the same purpose, uh, to learn, to connect, and, and to grow. And I think that a lot of the opportunities are those informal, impromptu moments of going and uh, having a coffee, uh, maybe a breakfast, maybe just bumping into someone in the hallway at these conferences that you may want to get to know, you may want to get to see, uh, or you didn't even know you wanted to know them. You have this opportunity to meet a whole host of different people, everyone who is struggling with the same issues and challenges in our industry. And the issues that Toronto faces are, are no different than the issues that are being faced uh, throughout the world. And I think that one of the really special things about ULI and this conference is bringing everyone together in a very uh, you know, intensive time period uh, to do a whole bunch of things. And so I think that there's a real opportunity in the space between to connect and, and find your way. You may not 
um, want to go on a tour. You may want to just go to a panel or you may choose to come to some of the cocktails or the events that are going on that are just happening in concert with the conferences. And, and I encourage you to, to take a look at all of those things that are going on. But I, my advice to everyone uh, when they come to a conference is to just experience it. And it's so hard in today's day and age to disconnect from your phone, from your emails, uh, from your day-to-day -day, um, you know, responsibilities. But take some time when you come, and I certainly hope that you do come, to go and experience some things. Because sometimes those moments actually open yourself up to think about things a little bit differently that will help you longer term in everything that you're doing in your day-to-day. With that, I'm gonna hand it over to Michelle because I think we do have a little bit of time for any questions that may have come up from the audience uh, that we can answer. And always in the spirit of ULI, uh, we always love to stay on time. So we're a little bit ahead of schedule. Uh, we are ahead of schedule um, and I actually don't see any questions uh, outstanding here. So with that, uh, Rob, I wanna thank you for being our MC today. Um, I feel like we barely scratched the surface of all that will be on offer at the spring meeting, uh, but we definitely hit on some really great highlights um, and, and having all of you explain your personal experiences with the meeting, I think was really helpful. Um, and uh, I hope that uh, it, it made a good impact on our viewers today. So on behalf of ULI Toronto, I do want to thank all of our speakers for joining us today. I want to remind you all that May, uh, March 8th, is the early bird deadline to register. Uh, Femina has put the link in the chat below to make it really easy for everybody. Um, and with that, thank you and have a great rest of the day. Thanks everyone.